I was born Phineas Ben Itzhak and uh, for, for legal purposes I was given Paweł Lichter in Ripping Poland July 5th, 1931. I was extremely protected by my parents uh, by this, the way they protected me, uh, so uh, was to send me to a school uh, that was uh, a Jewish school, Tarbut was called, and, uh, and the reason for it was because the Jews were extremely persecuted in public schools or sometimes not even accepted, I think. So the childhood was very, very protected and very, very beautiful for me. I had all kinds of toys because my, and the, the most modern toy that I had was a bicycle, four-wheel bicycle, and the seat was of wood. That was the latest thing there is. My, I lived in, with my family, who was my father and my mother, my sister, and my grandmother, who was the one that was in her house, which was a three-story building, and... Uh, we had a movie house. My father had a movie house, and he was a businessman. And then, uh, and also, my aunt lived in there, and also my uncle. I was aware of Hitler because we, uh, we had a radio. And uh, I, I was listening. Actually, all I was interested in the radio was the little eye that it had that would change directions. And I would figure that I could see through that. But my mother and father were very attentive to the radio, listening to Hitler with his diatribe. And uh, that's how it was. The war came in to Poland in 1939 on September 1st by the Germans equipment, tanks, horses, and all kinds of paraphernalia over there, uh, went through the town. Everybody was scared that they're going to gas us, but they did not. Uh, and uh, they went through the town, which was... Uh, the army and the equipment that was coming through was, I think, maybe a mile long. It was extremely big because I was watching it. And, uh, and then they passed the town and there was nothing until the next day. Then the Gestapo came in and things started to change. Immediately, that's when they uh, uh, grabbed my uncle 
his name was Israel Lichter, and they he had a bad ending because when the Nazis came in, they picked him among many others, took him to uh, took him to a place which is not too far from us, a cellar, and over there they tortured him. They uh, for many days, and uh, finally, finally uh, there was no answer anymore from them. So they murdered him, and to that extent, when they were in pain and complaining, they would put cement in their in, in their mouth. So he died horribly. We had to go out, uh, not uh, walk on a, on a walkways, but just on the street. They said the the Jews that were known all around in the town, they sent them for collections for to collect money to give them the money, which they were doing. And uh, as they were doing, they were also slapped around. And uh, the, it, that included my father. And... Uh, That was the beginning of the shenanigans that they started to do. So one of them, they, my mother, by order, was sewing some yellow patches on my, not Star of David's, but yellow patches on us. And... Uh, was one of them. Uh, it, we, we weren't let to go out of, th uh, of the house. We stayed in the house. Then the Germans came in. The Gestapo came in, or Germans, I don't know which one. Uh, they came in and they, res they told us to move to one bedroom to one room with everybody. So we were not allowed to get out from that bedroom, which happened to be a service bedroom. It was very small. My sister and I and my mother and my father and what my father was going out and then because of the collection that he was doing, for them, but one night they came in to the house, to that room where we were in, and my sister and myself were in one corner of the bed, and they uh, they they started by telling my father, who was there also, and my mother at that time, uh, to, uh, to bring down a safe that they know that there was there, which was my little safe, which was about, uh, I don't know, this big, but it was extremely heavy. My father had... Uh, heart condition, 
And my mother pleaded with them because they told him to take it down. And to their car outside. And my mother pleaded with them, telling them that he's he cannot do it because he has a heart condition and he might not even survive from that. So they made him they made him take it down anyway. The worst thing well not the worst thing was my father working like that. But the thing is that left a tremendous impression was that I was uh, in my house and the greatest thing that could tell me anything, my authority, was my father and my mother. And it's impossible to see. There was the most horrible time that I had with this. In that room, I was, we were a very short time after all that happened in that room because we had a lot of German friends uh, in prior to the war, my father and my mother. There was a lot of Germans uh, living in our town because of the proximity to the border. They call them Volksreich. And, uh, but they were friends. They were legitimate friends. And they uh, somehow let us know that uh, uh, don't stay there because get out of there as fast as you can. So my father rented or got a course and a horse and, uh, and a wagon r with somebody conducting it for a fee, of course, and put whatever was dear to us in, in the silver and stuff like that and valuables and, and coats and uh, minks and Beavers, I think they used to wear those like in, in, in the wagon. And we escaped uh, on a way, which was the only way to, uh, to go, was towards, uh, towards east, which was Russia. Everybody on the car spoke German, and they would say, uh, we're Volkswagen, and we're trying to go, we're not trying, we're going there to occupy the land on, on, a, on, on the east. So that's how it went through. There was maybe one, two, three, four encounters uh, like that. We had an Auschwitz. Auschwitz is a permit to travel. You're going there, f and the wagon is very slow. You don't make more than maybe 10 miles a day. Or ten kilometers, ten kilometers a day, and uh, so it was a long way until we came into the border. Then a patrol came in and uh, stopped us, and we were giving him the same story as before, and they says, "No, you all Jews." And you get out of there and line up over here, all of us. 
the whole bunch of us, one after another, against the wall over there. They were going to shoot us. Then the commanding officer of the of their group came by us, and he saw my father. And he saw my father, and he said, "Oh my God, you look like my my professor." So her professor. Go over there, which is another miracle for us. And so we went, and they directed us to go to the border. We came into the border, and then we arrived at the border, and uh, we stayed. We stopped at the... Uh, at one of the peasants' house over there that lived there. And now our job was to cross the border. So how do you do that? So we asked them to cross the border, and they said they'll do it, but they'll be only by... Uh, uh, if we leave all our possessions over here. So we did, and they took us out with their, uh, with, uh, they took us out. It was miserable. It was, this happened in more or less in December, oh, I don't remember. So everything was muggy and muddy and cold and penetrating, but we, got through that, and when you went to the border, then the Russians stopped us. And they uh, they stopped us, and they took us to a place, either Baranovici or, or Baranovice or, or, or Bialystok. I don't remember which town they took us. And they put us into Jewish houses who let us in voluntarily over there. I still remember this. And they gave us food, beds, and I still remember the big pillows that they had over there which stung. The pillows stung because they gave us our beds, their beds. They were to that extent helpful, and uh, they fed us, and then the Russians knew where we were. Then a request came in to you either convert to, uh, you either convert to, uh, to Russian citizenship, or we send you back to Poland. My mother, for some reason, didn't want to become a Russian citizen. She hated them. And uh, that was that. And they said, all you get in, we have wagons for you waiting out there. So they took us to the wagons, and they put us in the wagons, and they sent us to Siberia. Well, Siberia or upper rurals with borders with Siberia. And that trip took a long time. We were on the cattle. We... Uh, we were permitted during the trip to stop and get the hot water, which the Russians always had hot water at their stations, and that was it. 
and no food or anything like that, but we survived with the hot water. So we stopped at Bukhara, and in Bukhara, was a time we passed a terrible, terrible time over there because it was time of, they had famine over there and we arrived in the middle of the famine and uh, they still took us in and I don't know how I survived that famine that people were dying on the streets like in the plague days of before and they were just dropping on the streets and those carts picking them up. We survived that, I don't know, like, like I said, I don't know how because we had no food, we had no nothing. And of course, we all had lice and, and all the possible bugs that you can think of. It was horrible. I was attacked by when I was searching for food outside by a bunch of Uzbeks or Tajiks, I don't know which one they were, and they put a knife in my back. And so I was bleeding, and uh, I finally went as far as I could, and I, uh, and I fell down. So at that time they called, they called the uh, the ambulance. They did, and they came in. It wasn't an ambulance. It was just two nurses, and they dragged me to their station, and they. They sewed up the uh, the wound in my full consciousness. That was that was very bad. And then after that, when they sewed it up, they uh, and there was no med. They didn't put anything over. There was no penicillin. There was nothing. And that thing got infected. And I lost consciousness. My father somehow took me to hospital. They had a hospital there. And uh, after being there for a month without any consciousness, uh, I don't know how they fed me, how they did anything. But they put, I think they put some sulfur on it or, or, or because they, the, uh, I don't think it was penicillin because they didn't have it. It must have been sulfur. And somehow I survived. But at that time too, they, uh, my uncle, uh, they were, in Mexico City was permitted to send us packages and the packages contained sea rations. They arrived and they had sea rations and I think that's how we survived. My mother, I don't know how, she had uh, some diamonds. So we for some food, 
we got the uh, we gave they wanted to give us food the people that were well off they wanted diamonds so she gave us diamonds and they gave us some kind of a soup like maybe like cream of wheat or something like this and we survived on this for a while to the point where it came in where it was we were given preference always by my father and mother but uh, finally I don't know even if they had any I don't know how they survived uh, that they they would give it to my sister and, my, and myself and between that, we ended up with this in a long time. And then it came in, who's going to scrape the scrape the, the ball first and who second. And that ended. That's how he's, that's how, I, like I said, I don't know how my father and mother survived. They uh, permitted us to go back, and they gave us the same wagons again, and it was a very long journey because everything, we had to stop to let pass all the loot that they were bringing from Germany and uh, to Russia. And finally, we arrived in Poland, and uh, we went directly to our house. Our house was the house was uh, completely occupied. They made apartments out of it, and they were like. Uh, Ten apartments, and uh, they were occupied. There was no room for for us. We had a an uncle who who uh, emigrated to Mexico many, many years ago, and he was very influential. So we called him up, and he told us, come on to Mexico. The only way out was to go to Sweden, which we went to Sweden, and then the Jews from Sweden rented us a, a hotel place which was Trotnigata 37, I remember that. And uh, so that was my first, our first time out of, uh, out of Poland. And then we had to go wait for transportation for uh, Mexico. We finally found a way to go to uh, to to Mexico on a ship called Gripsol, and we boarded that trip. The German Jews, the Swedish Jews, were paying for all this. We went to the we went to the Gripsol, which was a wonderful experience because there was food and there was everything over there on that ship. Uh, 
I didn't tell this to anybody, and to my children, to anybody. I didn't want anybody to know. Up to this day, up to any day, when I think about those things, I, I, I really suffer again, you know? Because I remember everything that happened when they asked me. And that's, that's, how, that's, that's about all I would have.